basically a hard install. So we'll see. So I'm going to, let me maximize my virtual machine here. And I went to Mongo, I just typed in MongoDB into the search engine there. And what it comes up with is a MongoDB official site. So we can go there or we can go directly to download. Let's go to download. Now I haven't download, um, I haven't downloaded it for a while and there are sometimes changes, but we want server. So if you get to the download, we want to get the server and we want the community server. That's the free one, right? And it's a standalone on your own machine one. A lot of the others are running on the internet, which is probably a better thing if you're doing a lot of work, you know, to have it in the cloud. But this is a standalone um, thing ready for that. You notice it knows we're on Windows 64 bit. We want the MSI, which is the installer. So we'll just do download. You do not have to register. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want Atlas. I just want the regular servers. I'm not doing it. Your download should begin shortly, but where is it? I don't see it. Do you guys see it? So I want that 4.0 MSI download. Is it being blocked for some reason? There it is. So I want to run it. You can save it if you want, but then you have to go find it and run it. Okay, there it's running. Now, it typically, yeah. Does this stuff run well on external hard drive? Like MySQL and SQL? This one should run all right. Uh, MySQL, I'm not sure of. SQL Server, no. Yeah. SQL Server needs a kind of a root-based drive. My SQL, I'm not sure. Um, this should run on anything. Okay, so I see the little installer thing there. And that looks similar to what I installed last time. So let's do next. Let me make this bigger. Get a magnifier up. Okay, so you have to accept the licensing. If you really want to, you can read it. I never have. I probably should. It'll do next. We'll do a complete. Um, we'll run it. The service is, uh, I think we want it as a local. Do we want it as just a local server, local or domain user? No, let's just leave it as a network service user. It's going to create the login data directories, which it didn't used to do. That's nice. It used to be we had to go in and do that. I'm going to do next. Uh, it will install automatically download, so let's do next. So we're adding Compass, which is the front end to this. I think we're actually going to probably be using the command line more, but there is a front end, and I'll show you that one too. <coughs> so I'm going to begin the install. And usually this doesn't take very long, so we have to say yes. Mongo as a database isn't very 
big as either it's actual software, but it uh, can hold big amounts of data. Compass is the front end. That's what's going to take more time. And again, it's not a company. It's not a front end I much like, but I will show it to you. You can get other front ends. So we'll watch the green line go for a while. Mongo is only one of the um, NoSQL databases. It's probably the most common, most popular. Anybody ever used it or anything like it? Yeah. Do any of you know JavaScript? <laughs> a little bit, because it uses JavaScript. It uses JSON notation rather than SQL. <laughs> the JSON is pretty simple. It's just uh, basically uh, key value pairs. So you have a name, like a field name, and then a value, field name, value, field name, value, separated by commas. Compass is taking a while, which may mean that they've improved it, because they used to they used to be pretty clunky. There are some uh, front ends you can download that are really amazing, but they cost money. <laughs> Third party ones. <sighs> Nothing more exciting than watching a green line barely moving. <laughs> Things tend to install slower on the um, virtual machine than in the, on an actual. Laptop or machine. Are you installing it on the Yeah, I think that's cool. I know it'll work on a Mac. I know the install might be different. It'll work on, I've installed it on Linux and I've installed it on Windows. I, I need to co-opt my wife's Mac and try it on those too. She doesn't use it as much as she should considering how expensive it was. <laughs> Taking forever on that part. It usually doesn't take so long. As I said, they may have added some features to Compass. When we're done with this, I'll take give you a quickie tour, and then I'll do the PowerPoint, and then I'll let you guys finish up. How many need to finish up things? Most of you, not you. Yeah. If you're done, I mean, at that point, you can either play with Mongo or have an early afternoon. It's up to you. We'll start actually using Mongo in the next class. Of course, because I need to finish a script for you. Has it moved at all? I guess slightly.
do the the other one I think when as a service yeah, yeah. server user because otherwise you have to have a I think it's the opposite of what you think it is. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. You can look. Still don't think it's moved. Looking for uh, some JSON examples. Oh, okay, I think I'm done. looking through the things so so host name local host let's see if it'll connect it does so this is um, this is compass and again it's not my favorite uh, front end. In fact, as I said, I tend to use the command line. Boy, that's sketchy for the viewing, isn't it? <laughs> Is it easy? Can you see it? Okay. If it was what dark? I, I can turn this down a little. Is that better? I had it down earlier, but some people were taking notes and they didn't like that it was dim. All right, so there's some built-in databases. There's the admin database, the config, and the local. These are very different. I'm going to do a, these are very different than the relational database. I'm going to create a database just called test, and we'll give it a collection that will we'll call it test collection. A collection is kind of what a table is. So I'm going to create the database. So there's test, and it has test collection in there. As I said, the collection is kind of a table. There's a difference, though, between it and a regular table in that it won't have a structure, a pre-built structure. It's what they call it. It has no schema. Uh, like a relational database, everything is strictly controlled, right? It's strictly controlled what the columns are, what the data types are. These are much looser. Um, if I click on test collection, it will show me um, 
this form and then it will allow me and this is what I really hate though this is much more awkward than just writing it uh, so we could give it a name uh, so I'm just going to test name and then I will in the parentheses here give it some this is just a test alright and then I can go down here and I can add another field and I will name it test date. I'm going to make that all lowercase. And over here I can change this to date. Doesn't have errors. Um, so I'm going to do 2019. What is today's the 25th? Uh, except it's 0225. I think that it will allow that. So now I have a record in there. And can I look so I can edit it? Copy, clone, delete. What I'd really like to do is see it the way it really is. All right. So this is anyway. This is the. Uh, this is impossible to read. Just the table. What? Table. <laughs> yeah, but that's not what I want. I don't want to see it as a table. All right. What I wanted to do is show you the way it really is in there. All right, so let's do, we'll leave this open, but I'm also going to come down here and I'm going to do CMD. Okay. And CMD gives us the command prompt. Let me make my fonts bigger. So let's font and then I have to kill it and do it again to get my font to show. Ooh, is that better? Easier to read? All right, I am going to do CD. There's actually a way to do this before we do this. Let's do, um, I'm going to use the file, uh, right click, and I'm going to uh, new, and we're going to create a uh, shortcut so that we don't have to type in the path every time. So I'm going to, so the shortcut I need to, all right, properties, Usually starts a wizard. Let me delete that and try it again. New shortcut. Oh, it's over here. Ha. It's the trouble with zooming. I lose things. So I'm going to do browse this uh, PC C drive program files, and we want to go find um, Mongo. What? Right memory. Yeah. And then we want to go into binary and we want to get um, MongoD. Well, so we do want MongoD and we also just want Mongo. Let's for right now just do Mongo. Okay, so it's done. And when I click on this, it will launch Mongo Shell, which is uh, where I was going to navigate to. So this is basically another front end for it, but it's a front end that uses a command line. So we create a test. If I use lowercase u, use test 
So it switches to the, the test DB that we did there. Now, weird thing about this is when you say use test in this command line, it actually creates the database test if it doesn't exist. Just saying to use something creates it, which can be a bit of a pain if you accidentally type the wrong name, because suddenly now you have a database with that wrong name as well as the right name. <laughs> So I'm going to do um, db dot, and we called it test collection. And I'm going to do dot find. This is the equivalent of star dot star. And notice it has the data that we did in the form, right? I'm going to do it with that command line again, but I'm going to do dot pretty and this is what json kind of looks like although we're going to do it a bit more complex than that it has a curly brace begin and a curly brace at the end it has the uh, you know the, the names of the fields and then it has the values if you don't create an id it creates an id for you and it gives you this long hexadecimal number um, this is just a test, and then it gives you the date. And you can do, um, so if I wanted to insert a new one, so I'm just going to DB, which is the current context, so that's test, test collection. And I'm going to do insert, and I do a parenthesis. And then I'm just going to do a curly brace. Um, what do we want to say? So test name, test uh, two, comma, whoa. Yeah, OK. Just do single quotes. Okay, what else do we want in there? Test date. Um, and we can do the, the ISO date is a function. It converts a string to a date. So I'll do the same date, 2019, 02, And then it gives you the T, which since we didn't enter time, it's 00, zero colon, 00, zero colon, 00. Zero. That's meaning no time. All right. So that's our date. And then we can add another field, even though it's not in the other one. Uh, test type. What do we want to say? Um, not multiple choice. Or we could just say multiple choice. Let's do that. But if I want to change it, I have to go like this. And then I can do N to go back, comma. And um, I'm going to close the curly brace and then close the parentheses. And so it says it inserted one. So let's do DB test collection find. Again, that's like select star from. And then I'm going to do pretty. Pretty just formats it. You don't have to do pretty, but those are our two records in the same collection. And the, the only point being that they can be, uh, they don't have to be exactly the same. 
unlike a relational database table, every cave, every record is the same in the structure. Here they can you can add things, you can remove things, you can do whatever you want. Theoretically, everything in a collection should be related to each other somehow, right? But it doesn't have to be identical. Does that make sense? There's also, I'm going to do the PowerPoint in a moment, but there's no, um, even though we have IDs here, there's no relational structures. There's no many-to-many, one-to-many, things like that. Uh, the table, one collection does not relate to another. Now you could repeat this into another table, and then you could do a search to find that. But you'd have to do two searches, one search here to figure out what it is, and another search in the other uh, collection to find it. There's no, there's no joins, no relations like that. Consequently, what people tend to do is to put all the information together in one big blob. <laughs> so relation, these are really good databases for collecting non-structured information. And typically what, what they're really, really good at is like scraping uh, Twitter or Facebook or uh, Reddit, right, and bringing all that information they're really good for storing huge amounts of information, and they're really good at bringing in information from like social media platforms and things like that. And that kind of data, if you think about it, isn't structured. It has similarities of structure from one record to another, but they're different. Some will have pictures, some won't have pictures, some will have video, some won't have video, some will have text, some won't have text, some will. Um, have URLs. I mean, what any one post can have varies from whatever any other post would have. There's still some commonality about what a post is, but it, posts can have lots of different elements. And with this, you can just they can be there if they're there, and they're not there if they're not there. Does that make sense? It's these are really good for uh, certain kinds of data collection. I'm going to I think quit. All right, so let's do quit with parentheses. And that kills it for the moment. So I am going to go. I don't usually do this, but in um, this canvas under the modules for MongoDB, I'm going to do the NoSQL PowerPoint. I won't take forever at it. Um, I'm going to do it as an external link. And then we will do, I think I want to kill the uh, Zoom, though, for this. I don't have Chrome in here, so let's just do present. All right, so I'm just going to go through this fairly quickly, just talking about NoSQL, because they're very different than the databases we've been playing with. Questions? I mean, this is in your uh, module, and it's just called NoSQL. It's just a Google slide thing. All right, so SQL databases, the ones we've been playing with, have been around since the 1970s. That's pretty ancient for computers. For years, people have been trying to find other ways to deal with data because, as you've played with them a little bit, relational databases are really complicated, and they uh, don't map real well to programming environments, usually. <laughs> so they've been trying to find other ways to create, to manage data. Most of them have failed. Most of the other attempts have failed, but NoSQL has had some traction. It's actually working pretty well. Um, they they can actually use and interact with SQL databases. Most SQL databases, such as MySQL or uh, SQL Server, have means of exporting things as JSON and importing JSON. So I mean, they can talk to NoSQL databases. Um, but in general, 
SQL NoSQL databases don't have a schema. That is, means they don't have structures of tables and columns and rows and strict data types. Does that make sense? So they're a lot looser. Records in the same collection can vary, right? They can be different in structure. And uh, they also don't reinforce relational integrity. Whereas in a relational database, one of the cardinal rules is to never repeat anything. You know, everything is only in there once. It's fairly typical to repeat things everywhere in a NoSQL database, which has all of the problems that that entails. So if it's typed differently in one place, you may not find it when you're searching for it <coughs> because it's typed differently than it is somewhere else. Right? So there's all the dangers of how that repetition, as well as the... Um, as well as the advantages of not having to worry about the structure. Um, NoSQL databases tend to be fast. What slows relational databases down is relational integrity, checking one table to another, doing the joins, uh, all of that kind of thing. So NoSQL tends to be fairly fast. Um, they are easily distributed. And what that means is in a relational database, the typical way to get a bigger database is to buy more hard disk. If that makes sense. You just keep expanding your hard disk. If you got a terabyte database, you're going to have to have terabytes of uh, hard disk space. Um, NoSQL can be spread across just PCs if you want across the web. They can be scattered all over the world. Uh, the file is they can break the file up among many many machines. Whereas relational databases, it's usually pretty tightly bound to a set of files. So that makes it really easy to handle gigantically big data stores because you can distribute it across the web. There are um, developers like them because it's pretty easy to develop for them because you don't have that strict schema again. You don't have to take every form input and break it up into a dozen different tables input. Disadvantages though, um, so they have all the problems and risks of redundancy. So if, if you type something differently in one place and another, they probably won't both come back in the same search. Uh, because of the way they're distributed, distributed, I can't say that word, you can guarantee that the, you can't guarantee that the answer will be consistent. So you might have heard of Hadoop. It's an algorithm that um, Google developed for searches. Most uh, NoSQL databases use those. And uh, what it does is it goes out and it finds as many of those distributed files as it can in a reasonable amount of time and returns the data. But it never promises to get all of it. Right? So no. If you do the same query twice, you may get a different answer each time. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter much when you're querying social media. It can matter a lot if you're trying to do accounting. <laughs> so um, it doesn't have, they don't guarantee atomicity, which means that every transaction is complete and separate. Consistency, they don't guarantee that you'll always get the same answer back. This won't be a problem. This is not a problem if everything's on the same hard drive. Most of these are problems only if we spread out. Isolation doesn't necessarily guarantee that every transaction is separated from every other one. It actually has pretty good durability. That just means that it's saved to a disk somewhere. Okay. Um, so basically, NoSQL is really good for big data, social media kinds of things, but it's not particularly good for financial or point of sale types of transactions where you have to have things accurate and consistent and et cetera, and where you need to be able to val validate that those things are absolutely accurate. All right, so there's some different kinds of uh, NoSQL databases. Um, Key value pairs, which is actually most of them kind of do that. We're going to look, you know, we'll look at that a little bit more. Uh, column family stores are pretty weird. Um, they, they treat columns kind of like 
on a relational database retrieve tables. So they're kind of vertically oriented. I don't know if I can describe it very well because I don't understand it. Um, but these are a little bit more rare. Document databases, Mongo is a combination of these two. So basically each JSON document is a document. Um, and then uh, inside of the JSON objects are key value pairs. Graph databases are really neat. Um, they do things like, they still use JSON underneath basically, but they'll do things like uh, graph, draw pictures of every combination of relationship you have to say on Facebook. They would show all the people you relate to and all the people that they relate to and create this massive diagram of lines of all the relationships between things. Typically with a graph database, each piece of data is listed as a node. And then what it does is it draws all the relationships between those graphs. It actually does present it as a graph. They're, they're pretty neat, actually. But um, There's a link here if you want to know more about them. All of them, but the link there. So Mongo is one of the most popular. It's open source. Uh, it's the, you should call it part of the document type. And typically the main interface is the command line. For what it's worth, that's typical of all, re, all databases, even relational databases. If you're a database administrator, you're much more likely to use the command line than use the front ends. It's faster and it's more efficient. When they install SQL Server, on a server, they don't install the GUI generally. Not just the GUI for SQL Server. They don't even install the Windows GUI <laughs> um, because it takes inter it takes processing power to support the graphics. So why not just put all that processing power into the database, not have it running the you know the GUI? There are versions of Windows as server that have no front end. Typically, when you're doing a database server on Linux, the same thing. You don't install the, the graphical front ends. Now, you can remote to them. Like, you, you can put a, a graphical front end on another machine and remote in and do it that way. But they almost never put it on the actual server. OK, so the server is MongoD. Whoa. Um, I want to go previous. Isn't there a is it control tab, alt tab? Oh, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, well, let's see. Actually, let's do this. Yeah. So when you're doing it, MongoD, you know, we, we actually made um, our shortcut to Mongo. If the, if the server isn't running, you have to start it with MongoD. Right? That actually starts the server running. Um, we, so basically at the command line, all you have to do to create a database is say use it. So I'd say use text store, it'll create it. And then you can do, when you do uh, DB, which is the current, if you say use text store, text store will be DB, so whatever the current context is. Product collection find, that creates the product collection. Just uh, saying that searching there okay we did a little bit of that I know this stuff is kind of boring when you do it as a PowerPoint <laughs> all right so these instead of using SQL instead of doing a structure they use JSON so I've got a little bit of JSON here this is really tiny it's similar to what we just did curly braces um, the ID, you can give it an ID. If you do give it an ID, it has to be underscore ID. That's what it's, 
if you do let it go by default, it'll just give you a long number, a really long number. You have your um, field name and your value separated by colons, and then uh, commas. There's no comma after the last one. It can get a lot more complex than this because you can have objects embedded in objects, right? So you can have when we do our when I give you the script, I'll show you some of those. See if I have, this is inserting several objects, doing a query. Uh, everything, kind of like everything in uh, SQL is can be done with SQL. Everything in, um, J in Mongo is JSON. It's all JavaScript and JSON. This one gives you the average price. Is that the last slide? It's weird where I, I'm not sure why I went there with those. I do want to show you one other thing. I think that's it for the, this stuff. OK, all right. I don't want to do that. I just want to go out of there. There's a place, um, it's not my main blog. It's, let's see if I can remember it. Um, so Conger Prep Blogspot. Um, I think there is a link in the campus. If not, I'll make one. And one of the things that are is here is there's some Mongo stuff. First steps with NoSQL. It talks about setting it up and uh, using the command shell and doing some queries and some inserts. And then, so it creates, and then it does some queries. It's just here if you want to look at it. We'll be doing, I'll be leading you through doing a lot of this stuff. Starting on Wednesday. There's also uh, Mongo Database 2, which gives you a list of things you can do. I mean, it gives you a database and some queries of different kinds. And I think Mongo 3 is starting to go somewhere you don't want to go, which is um, talking to Mongo with uh, Python. I mean, if you want to play with it, you can. There's a PyMongo library that allows it to talk to Mongo. And then um, I did some more PyMongo. We'll be playing with that. And then the very last one of those is I'm just looking. Might be because I did a, a graphic. Actually, I know where it is. If I go to the top here, eh, maybe to the bottom. Did I not make a link? That's something I should add, because there's another one where I make a form. Oh, PyMongo Pi Kinter, yeah. And that's where I created a form that would write a record to Mongo. So that's all there if you want to look at it. Not required. OK. So what we're going to do, as I said, next time is um, go away, is we will build, uh, start building a Mongo database. Actually, let me look at the assignment. If you are done, there's one thing you can do. Uh, let's go back to our, did I not? I had Canvas up and it went away. I must have killed it. OK, 
guys are so quiet. Do you have questions? Or are you just as burnt out as I am? So I'm going to go to the modules and we'll go down here and um, so the very first thing if I look at what we're going to build is we're going to build a little database we're going to build it with uh, NoSQL instead of uh, SQL this is actually probably not a typical use of this kind of database it would be more as I said like scraping Twitter or something to gather data, which I intend to do also. But we're going to look at for our show tracker database. And basically, this is a database to track all the venues in town where shows occur. So like the Paramount and all the bars where they have music and et cetera. We should attract all the shows that each uh, information. You know, I gave some things that we would want to do, the venue, the times, the ticket information, a list of artists with the show. Um, ideally, it should also contain a description of the music and any age restrictions. Uh, it would be good so the user should be able to search by menu, venue, by date, by artist, and by type of music. And they should be able to register and say what kinds of music they want to follow or what artists they want to follow and be able to find that. Does that make sense? So that's a bunch of stuff. Kind of ignore the business rules. Um, and, and you can kind of ignore the others. The first task, though, the very first task, although I'm not going to make you hold, hold you to it, is I want you to kind of think about how this would look. It's not a schema as such like a database, but how do you think the collections, which are the, would, you know, what would they be? What would the SQL, or not the SQL, what would the JSON look like? Does that make sense? And then I'm going to actually give you a script because I want to do some queries. And uh, uh, you could build your own if you want, but I'll give you one uh, that we can query together. It'll be more complex. I'm, that's why it's taking me a while. I'm working on it. But that's the first job is just to see if you can think about it in terms of, you know, the that JSON, what, what would be there? Like you might want a venues, you know, a collection of venues. That makes sense? You don't have to think about it quite as strictly as, um, so this is Mongo collections JSON is the actual assignment. So all you need, when I say a list of the collections and their descriptions, all you would have to do, I'm gonna just bring up Notepad, Um, how big is my text? Not very. I'm just gonna make my text really big. So if you did a like a collection a venue, that's not actual JSON code, but that's fine. And then just did something like this. What kinds of things would you want about a venue? Say the name. Now you can leave that as empty as you want, or you could do like Paramount, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Double quotes work too. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Um, maybe address. I'm just going to put some fields. I'm assuming these will all be for uh, Seattle, but if you wanted to, you could do city. <clears throat> Particularly if you wanted to venture into Bellevue or somewhere. Um, anything you could think about, you know, uh, so address, city. Uh, you might want to know what restrictions, like if they're a bar. 21 or over. 
you know, just whatever uh, you want to put in there. But this is kind of what I'm looking for. And literally a notepad document will work. And if you want to put values over there, you can. But if you just do the field names, that's all right, too. But think about what kinds of things. So you got venues, you got fans, you got shows. You know, think about how those things would interact. And then we'll talk about it. And then we'll look at my script. My script won't necessarily be better than yours, but it'll be consistent if we use it. So, so that's the first thing to do is probably if you have anything to finish up from the MySQL or the SQL Server, I'll give you the rest of this time to do that. Or you can start on this. But if you're if you're not, you know, I would finish up before I start on this probably. <laughs> yeah. I kind of mean how uh, with the installation on that. Uh, it's not like it's had much. Yeah, like kind of like a, we'll just give you a spend for that too. Oh, okay. I can definitely see how it's possible to find it on the system. So, so they have a different I wonder if those are inside of the user. It's not going to be a lot. You hear most of the day. So it's in my first draft. Okay. And there's no comments. So then the, I think I, at this point we're just going to let it go. Okay. I didn't see. Now it, it may be that we will need to adopt things and take this into difficulties going forward. It would look okay. Okay. I think it's probably okay. Okay, so I'll keep doing the other things and if I have it. Yeah, yeah. So if we need to fix something, I can help you fix it. But uh, when I looked at it, I didn't have a whole list of comments. So. Okay.
don't know if you care, but just to show you how complex these can be, this is a Twitter post. This is just one Twitter post. It's like three pages of JSON. Because it keeps track of um, the user, the locations, uh, all of the different um, hashtags, keeps track of all of the, the properties of that user, um, the geo coordinates where it originated, contributors, you know, there's just a bunch of stuff for it. The actual tweet is the actual text is up in here, but there's just a ton of other stuff in there. And it shows you how JSON can be, things can be embedded. So this is basically like that, and then there's the user as a sub-object. And then there's objects inside of there. I don't know what CLL is. Oh. We're not going to do anything that complicated, but I just wanted to show you it can get complicated. <laughs> and they're just basically putting everything into one rather than breaking it up into tables, into collections. So it's saying this reverse. Yeah. Let me look at the, so that's his club, new resource. Are you in club thing? Are you trying to do club or was club? All right. And the server's running. You might do control C, I think it is running. And then you can run it again. It usually takes a long run. Okay, there it goes. for resource one back So let's look at your resource one. So your form. Resource one. So let's look though like at your URLs and et cetera to do. Let's look at URLs. Uh, log out message. Do you have one for any source form? Uh, yes, I have one. Okay. Have Which one? Uh, well, I don't see anything in the URL. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, I was working on one that was Right, but it's a research. Because if you look, there's nothing for the resource one. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's saying that it can't find it. Right, because sometimes it all has to be there and none of it's there. You know. It's partially because it has to process the base first. Yeah. 
And if you've got a link to something that doesn't exist. It's basically just you know it's you would be lacking in the specific I would have just made resource a type of tutorial, but yeah, that's fine. You know, in the sense of um, you could have like resource type and it could be a tutorial or video or whatever, but that's fine. That, I'm not sure why you need this. Yeah, I don't think Because they're already, you can list them from there. Other than that, it looks really good. Um, but again, with the, and again, I don't think you need announcement list. I'm not sure about this one either, because you have office member that's tied to member. Unless this is just a list of the officers, of the officer types, that makes sense. So I think that's probably okay. So I think I would just get rid of those two extra the, the list ones. So that I was thinking about trying to do. And I didn't look at every field, but it looks generally the relationships and everything look okay. Okay. And actually, think that just when you open instead of like looking Thank you. 